some stat my brother so my bro- oldest brother he's in startup businesses and he okay. has his own startup and we were talking about how less than one percent of all startups end up becoming successful same with business and same with it seems like youtube as well and so i was telling him how i was like feeling frustrated because with youtube it feels so stagnant and there's times where nothing's really happening and then there's random growth and then there's times where nothing's happening so what are you telling yourself when you were facing those times in business when there was just nothing going and like you didn't see any progress even though you were putting in the effort you're putting in the work was there anything you're telling yourself in those moments like i just have to get to this point or i should just see it like this this is a very good interesting question and my idea of business is to have a very lean approach mm. so i don't have a capital to invest my main investment i often say is my time mm. so i was not invested in from the point of view i've got a 50000 dollar capital which mm. i must get a yield back to the bank yeah. otherwise i'll be busted <laughs> so when i launched my first course it was like okay 15 dollars a piece mm. and we'll just sell seats and we make 1000 dollars out of it all right all right the other thing is that i know with with different businesses the project and the trajectory might be quite different. Right. I think for me things have been very fortunate that everything has sort of complemented. Right. So when I completed my fellowship exam I was always I was already doing this mentorship on a non-official and non-business basis. So I right. knew in my mind what I needed to do. Right. I was already teaching on courses for friends. So yeah. I knew that I can do it much better. Yes. Right. When I started my first courses they started like they would sell out. Mm. Uh, the the first course that I did was in Pakistan. Mm. So I get to get the idea. And the feedback that I got from the participant, we need more hands-on. Like so clinical think, skills? Yeah, clinical right, skills. So right. I think you need to listen to your participants to find that niche. Mm. And when you just completely disregard your participant, so when you've identified the niche, when you've got a basic idea, then you've got a winning formula. That's mm. one thing. The other thing with my YouTube thing i never took it as a business it was more like to you know just vent myself and relate to some of the examples and stories mm. and everybody related it to so well so people mm. often make a mistake of i won't say mistake but people often take a different approach they want their youtube channel to be a business and for some people honestly it will do very well my idea was that look youtube by the time it becomes a business mm. it will be 10 years 20 years now mm. well 10 years at least mm. down the line or at least 5 years down the line but i don't see myself making that much money from youtube in the first few years yeah so i need to run my business and i need them to be complemented so people are now my customers are coming from youtube yeah who are buying my courses right. so if you compare my business revenue it could be compared to any successful youtube channel mm. which i mean the youtube still sort of there but it's not the mainstream of income yeah it is actually complementing my business right right so right. you've got this lean approach of having the idea which is built on feedback understanding the niche of the market yeah and then making all the social platforms work for you yeah instead of you know taking treating them as individual business you just going into perfect harmony mm. and this is day and age of you know information and social media mm. it, it sounds like to me that youtube was this sort of accessory to the main thing and the main thing was a business and so for me i guess where i sort of pivoted for youtube was initially i was just making videos to try and be successful on youtube and then i thought okay i'm not really getting anything from just making these videos by myself and that's why i pivoted more into podcasts because i was like at least I can get something and have an interesting conversation with someone and learn something from someone and then that can be recorded and put up on YouTube and so if that works out that's fine but I still gain something by doing this whole process and it sounds like for you you still gain something by building that business and then YouTube is this other thing that's just sort of happening on the side is that right that's completely correct mm. uh, the other thing I would just like to add in that the growth of the business mm. is actually defined by the customers Right. So you may have an idea that look I want to launch a course and that would buy that would be my business. I'll grow that course that would turn out to be, you know, $100,000 course at every launch and so and so forth. Mm. But then again people approach you with different ideas. Mm. And one attitude and one instinct you must always say, yes I can do it. Mm. Just say yes. Be Just a yes say man. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I'll give you an example. The I think last week it was uh, there was a radiologist yeah. who approached me from Nigeria. 
Now, I do these interview workshops for a junior medical officer and registrars. So yeah. this radiologist approached me from Nigeria that, look, I've been accepted as partially comparable specialist. Okay. And I've got this interview in Westmead Hospital Breast Care Institute or something like that. Can you help me prepare for an interview? And I said for a moment, look, I've done interviews for surgeons, for emergency physicians, for GPs, for JMOs, lots of them. But radiology is a completely different niche, man. I don't know how it even works. Mm. And I could say no. Mm. But my businessman inside it. Man, <laughs> you're, turning, Make it work. <laughs> yeah, you're turning away the money. Mm. The, and she'd already purchased the ticket and everything. I, I could just return the amount and say, look, you're better off with someone else. Yeah, right. I said, no, I'll just prepare myself for this interview. Yeah. How hard could it be? Most of the interviews are on the same sort of framework structure. There's some non-clinical elements, there's some clinical elements, and there's yeah. a lot of professional behavior and personal elements to it. Yeah. And we can scale up to that. We did the interview, went for about an hour, hour and a half. And yesterday she sent me an email, thank you, I've got the job. There you go. Can you imagine? <laughs> so <laughs> the customers amazing. actually define your scaling up. Yeah. Uh, I'm getting lots of offers from partnership from big conglomerates mm. now that look, can you develop this for us and can you develop that for us? Mm. I think the growth is now only limited by my own availability of the time, mm. which can be, you know, a bit of hinging issue on your personal <laughs> mindset <laughs> and personal well being. Yeah. But I think in the initial, when you're experimenting and you're trying to, you know, evolve into something which is concrete, you've got to take everything is an experiment and mm. you learn as the part of that process. Yeah. I really agree with that part of you, that you said, just be a yes man. Yes. Every time an intern comes to me in uh, ED and they're like, oh, like I want to do more of this or that. I'm like, just say yes to everything. That's true. Like if someone asks you, can you do this? Say yes. And then go exactly. do it and then just try. And like, if you fail, that's fine. Yeah. Because like we talked about before, you learn by doing. And so you need to fail it first and then understand how to do it. And then later you'll be good. 